Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are here with us, whether we're at home on the lounge, whether we're here in this building, uh, whether we're walking. Lord, wherever we are, you are with us. We may ask that you would make your presence especially evident to each one of us today, that we would hear the word that you would have for us. Lord, we're ready. Speak to us. Amen. Well, during this month of November, we're embarking on a series... God never said that. Now, it would seem today that the unpardonable sin in today's culture is to call someone's behaviour sinful. It would seem that the unpardonable sin in today's culture is to call someone a sinner. Today, it's totally unacceptable to say that what someone does, that someone's behaviour, is sinful. Maybe you've heard this statement. Maybe you've heard this. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you don't hurt anyone. It doesn't matter what I do, it's none of your business. It doesn't matter what I do as long as you don't hurt anyone. God never said that. That is not what God intended for us. God has something better for you. God has something better for us. Uh, The word tolerance has uh, changed in its meaning over the years. You know, when I was growing up, the word tolerance meant everybody was of equal value, that all people were equal. But the word tolerance has evolved. And today, tolerance means that Everyone's behaviour is now equal. Everyone's actions are now equal. Uh, Therefore, it becomes totally unacceptable to say that someone's behaviour is sinful. Uh, And we notice this in the way that we have watered down and sanitised sinful terms to make them acceptable softer. And we see this in... Uh, the phrase, instead of saying, I'm looking at pornography, we say, adult entertainment. Sounds more sophisticated and acceptable. Instead of saying they committed adultery, uh, we say they had an affair. Doesn't sound as bad. Instead of saying they committed premarital sex, we say they're fooling around. And we have taken once what was wrong and try to make it more acceptable and softer. And that's partly because our culture, in our culture, the unpardonable sin is to tell somebody that their behaviour is wrong or sinful. Now we recognise that sin is real. That sin is that three-letter word, and what letter does the word sin have in the middle? I, that's right. I'm just trying to get a bit of feedback here at Southern Life Care. I, it has the letter I. Because sin is about me, I. What I want to do, my thinking, my behaviour, my actions, my doing, instead of obeying God's way. And so sin is saying, thinking or doing anything that disobeys what God's word tells us in the Bible. And sin has dramatic earthly consequences and eternal potential outcomes. Now, in regards to sin, uh, there are some myths within our society. And the first myth about sin is, I'm not really a bad person. I'm not a bad person. I wonder if you've heard that. I'm not a bad person. Some of us might even say, I'm not really a bad person, but look, I I make mistakes, but I'm not really that bad. But what we read in the Bible in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 8, and we'll be going through a number of Bible verses this morning, and you might like to take out your electronic device to write these down, or even an old uh, pen and a bit of a parcel that you've got uh, given during the week, you might want to write on the back of that, some of these Bible verses so that you can go back and reflect upon them. 
But this is a great verse in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Here in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, it says, If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. In other words, if we're saying that we are not a bad person, we're deceiving ourselves. Now, often we compare ourselves to other people. Uh, We compare ourselves to other people in order to say, well, I'm not really that bad. Look at what they do. I'm so much better than that. Uh, But other people are not the standard to which we compare ourselves. God is the standard. God is our holy, perfect God. And when we compare ourselves to him, we realise that we are sinners, that we are bad people. Well, welcome to Southern Church, where on a Sunday morning we make you feel better about yourself. This is an uncomfortable subject. I I wonder, is this uncomfortable for you? You might like to write that into the chat. I find this an uncomfortable subject to speak on because I don't really want to make people feel guilty about themselves. I don't want people who feel bad about themselves to feel even worse. I find it an uncomfortable subject. Do you find it uncomfortable? In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, uh, the writer to the Romans, Paul says, No one is righteous. Not even one. You're not. I'm not. There's none righteous. I'm not really a bad person. Is simply not true. We are all sinful in the eyes of the Lord and we all are in the need of a saviour. But there is a second uh, cultural myth and that second cultural myth is All sin is the same. All unforgiven sin leads to eternal consequences. All unforgiven sin leads to eternal consequences. This is what we read in the book of Romans again. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. All unforgiven sin leads to eternal consequences. But all sin is not the same because all sin have different consequences. Sin has different consequences. Now, imagine this morning that uh, I've been driving around Albion Park since the lockdown has sort of come to uh, be a little bit further eased and I've been driving around Albion Park and I've been driving around Albion Park and going to the what used to be a, a roundabout up at the Oak Flats interchange, but it's really a stopabout. You know, they took uh, 10 sets of traffic lights away f- to put in the bypass and they put all those traffic lights up at the roundabout. And so now you stop. Now imagine we're up there at the roundabout and maybe you're from England and you've travelled through the roundabouts all your life and you just go straight through and you've got no worries, but, but maybe you're from Australia, from Albion Park, and I'm driving through there and I cut you off. Imagine that. And you look around, you see, after you shoot me the finger, you see it's the minister. You might shoot me the finger, that's a sin. You might shoot me with a gun, that's a different type of sin. Both sins will keep you out of heaven if they are not forgiven. But they are not equal in the terms of consequences. All sin is not the same. All sin is different because of the consequences. And we uh, see this in Luke uh, chapter 20, in verse 47. Jesus is speaking to the religious leaders. And listen to these words that Jesus says in Luke 20. They shamelessly cheat widows out of their property and then pretend to be pious by making long prayers in public. Because of this, they will be severely punished. These religious leaders were taking advantage of the poor. God hates hypocrisy. And the Bible says they will be severely punished. All sin is not the same. All sin has different consequences. Uh, We read this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18. 
run from sexual sin. No other sin clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. In other words, there are different consequences for this sin compared to other sins. 1 Corinthians is saying to us that sexual immorality is a sin against our own body, our body that was purchased by the shed blood of Jesus. And many times in the Bible, now the Bible writers will say, fight, resist, stand firm against sin. But not with the sin of sexual immorality. The Bible says, run, flee, get away. And that's because this sin impacts you in a deep, personal, significant way. You see, how we live, how we behave, what we do matters. How we live, how we behave, what we do matters, matters here on earth, but it also matters for eternity. And some of those cultural myths, I'm not a bad person, are not true. We're all sinful in the eyes of a holy God and we're all in the need of a saviour. All unforgiven sin separates us from God. All sin is not the same because all sin has different consequences. But another cultural uh, myth is that, well, since I've already done it, I might as well continue to keep doing it. Since I've already done it, I might as well keep on doing it. And the way that this thinking works is, well, I cheated, I got away with it, it helped, so I could do it again. Or I've looked at something that I shouldn't have seen, I managed to erase my tracks, I didn't get caught, so I could go and do it again. And this was an issue for the early Christians. Again, in the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? In other words, if God is going to forgive us, does it really matter that I keep on sinning? Does it really matter that I should stop my behaviour? Well, the book of Romans is saying to us, we have died to sin. And since Jesus died for us, our sin no longer has power over us. So why would we go back to sin which hurts the heart of God? Why would we go back to sin which hurts us? Why would we go back which potentially can hurt others? Should we keep on sinning so that God will forgive us anyway? Well, no. God has something better for you. God has something better for us. And so we need to realise that uh, spiritual maturity isn't about having more knowledge, it's about having more fruit. That spiritual maturity isn't about how much we know, but how much we obey. Spiritual maturity isn't learning more and more, but learning more of how the Holy Spirit can work through us. Spiritual maturity isn't about gaining more knowledge, it's being transformed by that knowledge knowledge through the power of the Spirit. See, I, I think that most of us don't need to know more. We need to apply what we already know. We need to let God take the truth that he has revealed to us and let it settle into our spirit and soul so that we can be free from the sins that so easily entangle us. But you see, we need to recognise that sin is progressive. Sin is always progressive. Sin grows, and sin grows in the dark. When sin is confessed, we bring it into the light. We bring it into the light of Jesus, and as it exposed, then Jesus can set us free. Sin is progressive. Uh, you cheat once, you want to cheat again. You look at pornography, you get sucked in to want to look at it again. You lie, suddenly you start to lie more. Sin is progressive. Sin will take you further than you want to go and cost more than you're willing to pay. That's a really important point. You might want to write that down. You might want to put that into the chat. 
Sin will take you further than you want to go and it will cost you more than you're willing to pay because sin is progressive. Sin will take you further than you want to go and it will cost you more than you're willing to pay. And the moment you think, well, it's not really a big deal, then you're coasting into areas where you don't want to go and where it's going to cost you more than you realise. But the good news is that Jesus is a friend of sinners. That when you see yourself as a sinner, you see your need for the Saviour, Jesus. Jesus' friend of sinners. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, this is a great verse to hold on to. If you don't know this verse, I would encourage you to learn this verse from the Bible. I'm sure that during the years of Sunday school, this is a verse that you've probably learnt uh, through the years. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, commit this to memory. God is faithful. That's a great start. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. When you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. So it doesn't matter what sin you might feel trapped in. It doesn't matter how long you've been trapped there. It doesn't matter what you think you can't overcome. God has a way out. Jesus is the way out. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus is the way out. And maybe this morning you recognise that you are trapped. Well, step. Step out of your sin and into Jesus. Step into confession and out of bondage. Step into his power and out of the snare. Step into his love and transforming goodness. Sin costs us. But Jesus is bigger than our sin. Here's a great verse from 1 John 1, 1.9. If you don't know this verse, this is another great verse from the Bible to commit to memory. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. That's how good God is. That's how good Jesus is. He is the way out. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the way out of sin. He's the truth that will set us free. He is the life that satisfies. Now, when you are tempted, remember God is faithful. Our God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. God will always provide a way out. Jesus is the way. And so when our culture says, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you don't hurt anyone, recognise for what it is, it's a lie. That sin is the greatest enemy for intimacy with God. And Jesus is the friend of sinners. Well, let us come together and uh, let me pray for us today. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the one who sets us free. And today we want to step, Lord. We want to step into your love and transforming goodness. And as we step into that, we pray that you would help us to see the way out, that you are the way. We pray that you would help us to be able to step out of our sin and into life with you. And so, Lord Jesus, come this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit. Break those bonds, break those chains that hold us and so easily entangle us so that we can live in your freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. We're going to say goodbye from Southern Life Care and we're going to move to the live stream at Jamboree with uh, Luani. So until 10.30am for our kids talk I'll see you then. Goodbye and goodbye from everybody here.